Coaching Today with Marilyn and Sarah. I have a super encouraging testimony for you that just happened recently. I was preaching and I felt the Holy Spirit led me to pray for people who had neurological problems. I don't know what, you know, I mean, I know that deals with nerves and brain stuff, but aside from that, I don't really know because I'm not good at that kind of stuff. Anyways, I was obedient to the Holy Spirit and prayed for people that had neurological problems. And at the end of the prayer, I said, you know, please be sure to let me know. Um, come up and tell me or Facebook or whatever. Just keep me posted on what God is doing. So two weeks later, I had this really good friend in our church and he came up to me and said, you know what, Sarah? He said, when you prayed, um, he said, I had neuropathy and I always had pain in the ends of my fingers and toes because, you know, I guess it's the deadening of that. And he said, now for the last two weeks, I've had no pain and can feel without any problems whatsoever from that prayer. So I just encourage you, God answers prayer. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We love to pray for you. And maybe it is something that you have neuropathy or some neurological problem, or maybe you have a financial need or a, a family need, all kinds of problems that we have. But God looks at those as opportunities for God to participate in our life. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We love to pray for you. And mom, we have this totally cool book that we're doing and teaching on called Maximize Your Day God's Way. Exactly. Nobody can speak to this better than you. I'm living evidence. The voice of prejudice. <laughs> Keep it up. Right? Help us. <laughs> but I do share some how to set your priorities. And this is very, very key. Because I think a lot of times the reason we waste time, we don't prioritize the day. So how do you prioritize your day? And the how to is in this maximize your day God's way. So now I know what you're thinking. Well, you're older and you don't have the demands on your time. So when I started on the radio, and that's the way I got into media, basically, I would practice on Sarah and Michael, my children. So I would tell them the story, you know, of maybe Hezekiah, and I share that in here, how he used his time well. And I would share the story of Gideon. Now, if they get it and they like it, then it's going to be okay on the radio. Now, when Sarah had her three children, they were little, she, you would bathe them at the same time. Right. She would say, come over and tell them Bible stories, you know, while I'm bathing them because then, you know, they let me bathe them okay. So we use that time to pour the Word of God into them. But, oh, I love this. When I started memorizing books of the Bible, I would want to give them to Sarah. She's a teenager. She didn't want to listen to chapter 10 of Revelation. And so I was sneaky. I said, uh, I'll scratch her back. She loved to have her back scratched. I said, if you will listen to one chapter, and so I'm scratching your back and you said, mom, you're not doing one chapter. You're doing two or three. But that word was also going into her. I was getting to speak it and using my time well. And how do you do that? Well, you prioritize your day. And I tell you exactly how to prioritize your day. So I don't have a day that I don't prioritize. If I'm flying, I prioritize my time on the plane. What am I going to read? It's a wonderful time to read because nobody talks to you, nobody's on the phone. And you can really study in that time. And I can use my phone to take notes. So why slop around when wisdom, if you will organize your day, God will give you wisdom. And when I get disconnected, I don't fall apart because he's going to give me wisdom in that time. That, listen, you say, is that in the Bible? Of course it's in the Bible. It's in Psalm 90, verse 12. Teach us, so I'm teaching you, to number your days, organize your day, that you may be, apply your heart to wisdom. So how do you feel about that? It's good. Easy, to, sometimes it's easier to say than do. Right. So walk us through some of the doing. Okay, so the doing <laughs> is key. So cooking, you know, when my children were going up, I would cook, but often I doubled the recipe and then I could pull it out on Sundays when we came home for lunch because I already had it ready. 
also organizing what I'm going to wear, what my children were going to wear, putting out their shoes and whatever it was. You know, when they're little, I would do those things. So I saw that time is so valuable for you. Then I would do some things like when I was preparing for television, you know, I would practice. Now listen to me. I don't just do things without practice. I would call someone and say, now I want you to listen to me and be critical and tell me, you know, what isn't clear here. So I'd call the, you have to be very honest with me. So I'd call them, I'd go through the lesson. Well, what is it? Well, I didn't understand and you didn't pronounce that name right and you didn't do this. And so I help people to, what can I say? Help me to organize my time and make it clear. And I think that was very, very key. And then the lessons that I would learn, because I learned from radio, from getting some free time, then when I had to pay for it, you know, they said, okay, five minutes a day. Well, that didn't throw me. I could do a lot in five minutes. And the five minutes went so well that they said, why don't you do 15 minutes a day? And then, you know, they began to put it in a national way. And television the same way. The processes of time produce great results. And how do you process your time? Well, I tell you exactly because I don't have time to tell you everything on this program. But when you get the book, I'm telling you, you will underline it. And you will see how God is very patient with you and wants to help you in the process of time. So I tell you about some special people in the Bible like Gideon. Gideon was a great success, but he, he didn't think he was. You know, he was depressed. You know, the Midianites were after them. And God came to him and said, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. Who, me? I'm stupid. I'm poor. You know, the Midianites are after me. But the angel kept saying po positive things. And see, in this book, I keep saying positive things to you because God sees you as an achiever. Yes, he does. He sees you as a high achiever. And so Gideon started in the process, scared out of his shoes and did something and did it at night so he wouldn't get punished. And God took him through that process, the processing of time. I mean, you didn't learn overnight how to process teenagers. Did you? No, I'm still learning. Processing teenagers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's very exciting. And so you learn how to process cooking and all of their schedule that goes with it. So I never processed out my husband or my children. I kept them number one in it. God first, my family next, and then the things I wanted to achieve, I would put them on paper. And that's the way I achieve, is I put down a process of what I want to do. So today, you know, of course, I got up. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is your beloved Marilyn. But then I began to say what he said. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you think, I don't feel strong today. But that I'm doing it through Christ. And then... You know, I have to do this and this and this to be ready. So last night, I set out my clothes for television. That's right. I didn't get up and think, oh, what am I going to wear? I had it all ready. I had shoes. I had everything. Last night, I marked my Bible with the scriptures that I was going to be using on this program. So I didn't come in and think, what are we going to do today? And then... What am I going to do when the television taping is over? Hey, don't slop around. Time is expensive and we all get the same amount. Why do some people produce more, achieve more? Because they honor time. They honor time. And I love this. If we will honor the time, I believe God will redeem time for us and buy up opportunities and give us favor. And all of this is process. So I'm going to go back. Stay with me. <laughs> Don't hang up. Don't turn me off. 
I say, don't hang up. Don't turn me off. But, you know, in 95, God spoke to me to go to Pakistan and do a healing meeting. And I was to do it in Lahore. I knew the city. And no, no one has ever done a healing meeting there. And a woman, are you kidding? This is a Muslim country. But this is what I love about God. He thinks you can do anything. His confidence in you. So I went. I did it. I had four nights. The last night I had 20,000. Had a lot of people get born again. Shocked me. And if you had seen that meeting, you would have said, why don't you go home and learn some more? You didn't do it very well. But key people were born again in that meeting. One of them, the man who was God born again in that meeting, is now the head of all of the security to Pakistan. Born again, turned on to God, spirit-filled. Another one has television networks, and I just came back from having a meeting with a million people. And how did I get that from a man that got born again in 95? So see, time, using time well, has a process of multiplication. And what God can do with a little bit of time and a little bit of organizing could produce some of the most fantastic results you've ever dreamed of. So you say, well, I'm a time waster. Call us. We'll pray for you. Get eight books. Do you know eight people? Eight is the number of new beginning. Give them a new beginning, you know, and this is good for teenagers. I mean, this will work, period. So please call us with prayer requests. Get your books right away in Jesus' name. Do you struggle to make the Lord your first priority as you set goals and plan your daily activities? There is no doubt this may be the busiest generation that has ever lived. Rejoice! You can avoid the pressure cooker of a too busy life. For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you Marilyn's book, Maximize Your Day, God's Way. In this life-changing book, Marilyn shares keys anyone can use to become a happy, productive individual, as well as an effective instrument for God. We will also send you the Maximize Your Day, God's Way 2 CD teaching set. These encouraging teachings will help you organize your priorities for God in the midst of emails, text messages, and long to-do lists. And to complete this valuable offer, we will send you Chantel Cooley's book, Stand on the Word. This book will help you meditate on the Word of God on a daily basis. Discover how managing your time will help everyday living become more enjoyable and rewarding, both here and in eternity. Call or click today for this valuable resource. glad that you're watching today with Marilyn and Sarah and you know just encouraging you that when God when you we tell you please call for prayer please get on the website for prayer God answers those prayers and I was just reading a testimony from Mrs. Jenkins about how she had lost her job in 2012 called for prayer and by the end of that year she had finished her college degree and also received a new job so God does answer prayer and sometimes mom when we talk about maximizing our day and using our time wisely that's a big prayer point for for lots of us I mean boatloads so we it encourage is. you call and, and and ask for prayer for your time, how to maximize, how to utilize your time with efficiency, but supernatural productivity as well. Exactly. And I have found out this, and I think it's so wonderful, that even when you don't feel well and you wake up and you think, oh, yuck, you know, if you will listen, learn to listen to him, 
he will show you what to do in times when you don't feel well. So I'm just going to share something. I, I was very sick with parasites. And so I would wake up in the morning. I'm just being very honest. I would be depressed. And I said to the Lord, show me, teach me how to number this day. And this is what he told me. Call people that you know that are sick and pray for them. Oh God, I'm sicker than they are. But he said, you call them and pray for them because there's something about sowing in somebody else's life that brings a harvest in your own. So I would call sick people and I just say, this is Marilyn Hickey. Do you mind if I pray for you? I'd like to pray for your healing today. I didn't tell them I feel yucky. I prayed for them. Do you know at the end of seven days, I had health. See, this is what it says he will give us wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That was the wisdom for that time in my life. And it was very, very key. Let me give you another thing. I think this is important. And by the way, all you partners out there, I could never do the things I do if we didn't have you. I love you with all my heart. I pray for you every day. But, you know, one time we took a whole team into Tibet. Tibet is a Buddhist country. It is owned by the Chinese. They kicked the Dalai Lama out and they told us, you can't do anything. Don't bring any tracks. Don't do, you can't do anything. Well, God, give me wisdom. Can we just walk around and look at the sites? Is there anything we can do? And this is what God said to me. See, this is the wisdom. If you'll prioritize your time, he'll give you wisdom. He said, you can do prayer walking. So we had 104 people who did prayer walking. You know, we, did, we couldn't pass out tracts. And of course, we couldn't speak their language, but we could pray. So my guide said to me, uh, do you know anything about Jesus? He could speak English perfectly. I said, well, yes, I do. I said, I have four Bibles in your language, New Testaments. Oh, he said, I want the first one. Now watch God. So he said, now you have four. Yes, I'll give you that one. So he goes to the head Lama and tells him that I have these three New Testaments in their language. And the head Lama said, have her come to me and give them to me. So I went, the head Lama took them. I have pictures with this. Now this is prayer walking. Remember, wisdom comes in prioritizing time. And now that head Lama has taught the gospels to every monk in Tibet. Tibet is in the middle of revival. You say, but you didn't do anything big. We did prayer walking, 104 people doing prayer walking. So when he teaches you to number your days, you will apply your heart to wisdom. And who knows, who knows how far it can go. So let me tell you some other titles in here. And of course, feel free to call in with prayer requests because we love to pray and we love to see what God does in your life. Hitting the mark. If you don't prioritize your time, you won't hit the mark because you didn't even make a mark. Oh, what's the mark for the day? Well, I don't know. I just, well, you'll never hit the mark if you don't prioritize your day. And look here, the pressure cooker. Oh, what about when you get under pressure? So I remember one time I was going to Pakistan and I've done big meetings there seven times. And I got there, I was so tired. I had jet lag and I have to speak to all these people, maybe 10,000 people or more. And I said to the Lord, oh, I am so tired. I have jet lag, you know, oh. And he said to me, I'm not, it's not your name that's going to do it. It's my name. What is that? That's the wisdom he drops into your heart for the occasion of what you have. How do we know what to say to people? Well, if we sow, we're going to reap. If I sow my time in good things and in helping people, I'm going to reap. And you know, my harvests keep getting bigger. Oh, you say, where is that in your book? 
That's on page 105. And you will love that. And then what about eternity? What about from here to eternity? Are there going to be people in heaven that you sowed in here? Are you, do you have a prayer list of your unsaved loved ones? Are you doing it hit, not hit and miss? You're hitting it and you're prioritizing that? I'm telling you, I don't have to prioritize my time in eternity. We don't have a time limit, but I do here. So what am I doing? I'm getting ready for eternity, but I'm also getting other people ready. So remember, you can get this book by calling in, but you give people, fr what do you, what I want to say, you give them fruit, that's nice. You give them flowers, they will. You give them candy, you make them fat. But if you gave them this book, Maximize Your Day God's Way, could you change their lives? Could you be a life changer by sharing this book? Could this be a book you use in a daily way to prioritize your time? Could this one chapter hitting the mark show you how to plan your day and schedule your time? You say, I don't know how you do that. And I can't, you're talking so fast, I can't get it. But when you get the book, there's a whole chapter on it. And it's no secret. It's no big secret. It's basically using the principles that God has for us. So get books for other people. And what about catching God's vision for you? When he told Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor, that was God's vision. And Gideon literally delivered the Israelites. He delivered them from the Midianites through a process of listening to God. God has a vision of you. God has a plan for you that has your name on it. If you don't believe it, read Psalm 139. He tells how he puts you together piece by piece by piece. He tells how he gives you your thoughts before you even know them. Oh, is that awesome? So what is his vision for you? Is it just some slop bucket thing? Oh, hum, who am I? Hey, he has something so wonderful. And I'm thinking, and I tell about this, about a King Hezekiah. The enemy was coming and going to attack them. What do you do? Do you just get in fear and fall apart and have a nervous breakdown? No, he didn't. He had a water tunnel outside the city the enemy could take and then they wouldn't have any water in the city. So while he's waiting for the enemy to come, he covers that water, the entrance of that water tunnel and digs a tunnel and gets the water into the city. It's called Hezekiah's Tunnel. And you and I have walked through it. You know, my husband took us through it several times. It's almost a mile. And he got the water inside. You know, is the enemy attacking you? Are you having all kinds of just yucky, horrible problems? Can God give you a plan that can make you successful? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. This will so encourage you who you are in Jesus, the vision that he has for you, and how that vision can come to pass piece by piece. Call in with your prayer request and call in and get these books. Pass them on. Books work while you sleep. I say they are real missionaries. Do you struggle to make the Lord your first priority as you set goals and plan your daily activities? There is no doubt this may be the busiest generation that has ever lived. Rejoice, you can avoid the pressure cooker of a too busy life. For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you Marilyn's book, Maximize Your Day, God's Way. In this life-changing book, Marilyn shares keys anyone can use to become a happy, productive individual, as well as an effective instrument for God. We will also send you the Maximize Your Day, God's Way 2 CD teaching set. These encouraging teachings will help you organize your priorities for God in the midst of emails, text messages, and long to-do lists. And to complete this valuable offer, we will send you Chantel Cooley's book, Stand on the Word. This book will help you meditate on the Word of God on a daily basis. Discover how managing your time will help everyday living become more enjoyable and rewarding, both here and in eternity. 
Call or click today for this valuable resource. a grocery list before you go to the grocery store. I have found if you don't, you get loosey-goosey, you see this, you buy this, and then you forget something. Do you agree? Yeah, totally agree. And God wants to help us prioritize and, and be effective and efficient. So I want to pray for our audience, Mom. Yes, because please. Because so many ways we get kind of fragmented in our time and our thoughts and our focus, and God wants to help us be cohesive right. and effective. So right. I want to pray for you today that that the vision God has given you for your life and knowing Christ is a part of your daily experience. No matter what's going on, that every single thing we come to know Christ more and better than we did the preceding day. So let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for speaking to us today, encouraging us with your love and also how you want to achieve through us. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us to integrate you throughout every day and all the things we got to do, but help us to know you in all those experiences through all those times and seasons, through all those priorities. Help us to know you and hear your voice clearly more than any other voice. Thank you for speaking to us and helping us to be effective because of your presence and your power working through us in Jesus' name. Amen. And of course, I encourage you as we finish today, hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy, grab a couple of copies. This would make, oh my goodness, this would make a great book for a book club, a study group, you know, a Sunday school class. This would be a phenomenal content and discussion, right? You get in a book club and you talk to each other and you're like, oh, I like this, or I didn't understand that. And having those conversations really helps to not only maximize the content from this, but also helps you to maximize your day. So hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a couple of copies, bring it into your Sunday school class or book club. And remember, we always love to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer every single day. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We are so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So of course, you gotta hit the subscribe button because we wanna continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience and when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.